Here are the top 50 macOS terminal commands you need to know. So get your coffee ready. This will take about 10 minutes. First, how do you launch a terminal? Hit the command key and spacebar, search for terminal. There it is, hit enter and you're there. Let's do something fun first. We can actually make our Mac talk right from the terminal. Just type in say and whatever you wanna say. And whatever you want to say, isn't that awesome? I mess with my kids a lot with this one. Did you know your Mac keeps a record of all the Wi-Fi passwords you've ever used? And we can find those passwords right from the terminal. Check this out. The command is security, find dash generic, dash password, do a dash WA, and then the name of that Wi-Fi network. I haven't been here in ages, but there's the password right there. If I wanna quickly copy that and share it with a friend, run that command once more, but do a pipe and type in PB copy, and this will copy the output of any command to your clipboard, allowing me to send Nick that password. And you can use PB copy with any command. Now I'm sure you know how to copy and paste on your Mac. Highlight some text, command C and command V to paste. But often you don't want that formatting. You just want the plain text. To paste without formatting, command, option, shift, and V. Plain text. And I know that wasn't the terminal, but it's still pretty cool. How do you stay awake? Caffeine. Your Mac, the same way. In the terminal type in caffeinate. Hit enter, and as long as your terminal is up, your Mac will stay awake. And then hit control C to stop. Coffee break for that. Taking screenshots on a Mac is pretty easy. Command Shift 3, your whole screen. And by default, saves to your desktop. There it is. That's cool, but I kind of hate that. What I always do is Command Shift 4, which allows me to select just part of what I want to copy and saves it to the desktop. But even better is Command Control Shift 4. <laughs> it's getting crazy. And when you capture it, it goes to your clipboard. So I can tell Nick how awesome Dashlane is. There you go, Nick. And Nick does love using Dashlane, don't you? You better say yes, Nick. <laughs> I'm gonna lock you in a liminal space. Now I know that wasn't a terminal command, but with the terminal, you can change the default name of your screenshots, because right now they're named random, as you can see down here. With this command, and this is kind of wordy, so I'll have all these commands below, but defaults right, com.apple.screencapture, name, and then whatever you wanna name it. So now when I capture my screen, it'll name it exactly what we want. We can also change the default file type with the type option. Let's say we want JPEGs instead, done. Or we can also change the location with the location option of where our screenshots are saved. Now don't get scared, but your Mac does keep a history of everything you download. Like seriously, it's in a database. Use this command to see what you've downloaded. And it's actually in a SQLite 3 database. Kind of interesting. And right there, it'll show you a lot of empty space. <laughs> all the things you've downloaded, even if you clear your browsing history. So if you don't want Tim Cook or anyone else to know what you've been downloading, use this command to clear that stuff. Nothing there. To change your password, you don't have to leave the terminal. Just type in P-A-S-S-W-D, or password, and you can change your password. And then I'll go ahead and update my keychain user with that command they provide. And by the way, I have a different password for everything. You should too, and I know. It seems impossible to manage, but not with Dashlane, the sponsor of this video. Dashlane is the password manager I use for personal stuff and for my work stuff. In fact, I just shared a password with one of my new employees in the other room, which by the way, I don't know how I would have onboarded this new employee without Dashlane. They make it so easy. Sharing passwords and logins and all kinds of stuff. Now, personally, it tells me my password health. I have some work to do. 29 compromised passwords. Are your passwords compromised? You may not know, but thankfully Dashlane does do some dark web monitoring. They watch for you. And I also have some work to do here. <laughs> Goodness. Now for my company, I use Dashlane to manage all my employees' passwords, making sure their passwords are healthy, that they're changing them, especially my new employees. I'm watching you, Michael. Change your passwords. Also you too, Nick. I can also see what all my employees are doing as far as their password health. And then this by far is my favorite feature of Dashlane. Not only will they fill in your passwords right here in the browser, wherever you are, but they got two factor built in. All I gotta do is click it and they put it in, done. So make sure you got a different password for every service and do it well with Dashlane, check it out, link below. And use my code NETWORKCHUCK50, you'll get 50% off at checkout. Don't get hacked, do this. Now you may have known that Mac is very similar to Linux. They're both Unix based, which means a lot of the commands on Linux work on Mac. So let's take a quick coffee break and then I'll speed round my favorite Linux commands I think you need to know for your Mac. CD will change your current working directory. Type in CD where you want to go and you're there. Type in CD space to get back home. The LS command will list all the files and folders in your directory, wherever you are. But where are you? Let's find out with the PWD command. It will print your working directory. There I am, but who am I? <laughs> you can find out with the who am I command telling you exactly who you are in case you forget. We can move files with the MV command. 
specifying our file and where we want to move it to. We can use the cp command to copy files, specifying our file and where we want to copy it to. Mac OS actually has a better version of that called ditto, which I love because well, it's called ditto. And it works in a very similar way to the cp command. Use the df-h command to see how much space you have on your hard drive. Use the nano command to start editing a file right here in your terminal. No need to go anywhere. And then control x, y, and enter to save and get out of there. Use the man command to learn about your commands. Man? <laughs> Sorry for that. I can man nano to find out what it is. Hitting Q to quit that. I can man man. I can use the open command to, well, uh, open things. Like the screenshot. Bam. Yes, I know you can click on it, but it feels so much better opening it from a terminal, doesn't it? It does. If you want to see if your favorite website is up and running, type in the ping command and then the name of the website. If you get responses, then it's up. Hit control C to stop that. What's your IP address? Type in ifconfig. But maybe you can't find it, like me. Try doing ifconfig and specifying the en zero interface. This will work for most people. Now that's kind of messy. We'll do that same command, but we'll do a pipe and use the grep command, which allows us to filter on what we want to see. So I'll do grep inet. Better. Even better is the awk command. Another pipe. Type in awk, and with some crazy regular expression stuff, I get just the IP addresses, both IPv4 and IPv6. To see the path through the internet that you're taking to get to a certain website, type in traceroute. This one's really cool. Traceroute, the website you want to see, and it will show you every router you hit, including the latency. Great for troubleshooting. If you want to dig into the DNS of a website, you can use the tool called dig. Dig the website name, and you get all the DNS goodness. If you want to see all the processes on your computer, type in the ps command, which won't tell you a lot, so you have to tell it you want to see more. Type in ps-ax, and you do get a lot more. With the top command, you can see which processes are using the most CPU real time. You can also filter by memory by doing top-o r size, seeing what's using the most memory on your computer. One of my favorite commands, the kill command, will kill a running process. So I'll find my running process I want to kill with the ps command. I'll grep for the name, find my process ID, there it is, and then I'll do kill-9 and the process ID. And I killed it. Speed round done. Now with the Mac OS terminal, you can use different types of shells. That's our next command. Find out what you're using with the which shell, dollar sign shell command. Hey, we're using ZSH, but you may not want to. We can switch to good old bash by typing in bash, and suddenly we're in bash world. Or we can switch back to ZSH with the ZSH command, and we're using ZSH again. How long has your Mac been up? We can find out with the uptime command. Seven days. Woo! Good boy. To flush your DNS cache, you'll use these series of commands to make it happen. Put in your sudo password, and you're good. To get a quick preview of the file, we can do that from the terminal, the ql manage command with a dash p and the file name. A little preview, just like that. If we want to compare two files, we can use the diff command, diff and the file names. We can also download files through our terminal with the curl command. Curl the URL you want to download from, and then just use a right arrow to point to where you want to store it. Done. Entire Bible downloaded. We can also curl the weather. Curl wttr.in forward slash and where you want to be. If you're spending too much time in the terminal, you can set an alarm in your terminal. Type in leave. And what time you want the alarm for? Let's say 1245. Alarm set. And it tells you to leave because you have to be told to leave the terminal. It's too fun. To see a history of all your commands because you've been typing a lot of commands, type in history. And there they are. This one's pretty handy because you can disable your gatekeeper. The thing on your Mac that keeps you from installing apps you want to install. That might be insecure, but whatever. I know what I'm doing. To do that, one simple command. sudo spctl space dash dash master dash disable. Put in your sudo password. Take that gatekeeper. Now, I would not do that for anyone that doesn't need it. Like your parents. Don't, don't let them do that. Now, here are where the commands get kind of crazy and fun and amazing. But we gotta do something first. We have to install brew because everything good starts with a good brew. Brew is known as the missing package manager for Mac OS. And you probably didn't know it was missing, but hey, we found it. Install it with one command. I'll have that below, it's kind of wordy. And let it do its thing. It might take a moment, so go ahead and take a little coffee break. While your brew is brewing, do your brew. Brew, brew some, brew, drink some coffee. And now we can have some fun. This first thing I want to show you is crazy. Type in brew install C matrix. Once installed, simply type in C matrix and take the red pill, Neo. <laughs> <laughs> How cool is that? Hit control C to exit the matrix. This next one is pretty cool too. Brew install ASCII aquarium. And when installed, simply type in ASCII aquarium and go fish, dude. I could watch this all day. It even has a little ship going across. All right, control C to get out. Toilet. That's the name of this next one. It's kind of weird. Brew install toilet. Fun fact, I used to sell toilets. And once installed, you can turn any name, text, whatever into ASCII character art like this. Toilet network chuck. Beautiful. Toilet. Hi, Nick. 
Hi, Nick. That's just fun. And I know you were wondering, Chuck, can I play Tetris in Terminal? The answer is yes, duh. Brew install, samte-tui-tetris. Install it, and then simply type in Tetris. Choose your level, and go to town. Yes, the terminal can do everything and more. Hit escape to get out of there. Now your Mac does have Python 3 installed by default. Python is amazing. Too amazing for me to tell you everything, but one thing you can do is start a little web server right from where you are. Type in Python 3-m -t no, http dot server, and suddenly you have a little web server on port 8000, which means anybody on your network can go to your IP address on port 8000 and browse your stuff, which means you can easily share files just like that, in case all the other stuff doesn't work. That's pretty cool, I think. Hit Control c to end that web server. And when you're ready to shut down your computer, you don't have to leave the terminal. You can stay right here with the shut down command. Shut down, dash H now for right now, or dash R and now for a restart. And finally, I saved the best for last. This one's stinking cool. If you're like me, you're tired of typing in your sudo password. If only we could just use our finger instead of sudo, and that's what this is. You can use your touch ID on your MacBook as your sudo password when I ask you for it. To do that, we'll type in sudo first, type in nano, and we're going to edit the file forward slash etc forward slash pam.d forward slash sudo. Put your sudo password in for the last time, and just below that first comment, add this line, auth sufficient pam underscore tid dot so. Control X, Y, enter to save, hit OK, and let's see if it works. Let's try one of our commands from earlier, clearing our DNS cache. Here we go, that's killer. Best command ever, video over, bye.